This is the first of a series of videos on a condition called acute pancreatitis. In this particular video, we will assess the causes of acute pancreatitis and what investigations are necessary to try and find a cause for pancreatitis when it's not obvious. To get a better understanding, let's look, look at this cartoon drawing. The liver produces bile that comes down the bile tube. Bile is stored in the gallbladder that squirts it down and then the bile enters the small bowel. The stomach churns the food up and passes it into the small bowel. The pancreas gland is at the back of the stomach. It produces enzymes or chemicals that break the food down into its component so that it's digested. And these enzymes live within the pancreas in an inactivated form. But these get activated when they are in the small bowel and in contact with the food. The other important function of the pancreas is to produce insulin. It is the action of various causes on the enzymes within the pancreas itself that triggers pancreatitis or inflammation of the pancreas gland. Let's review some of these important causes. Here are the causes of the pancreatitis, the commonest being gallstones. Going back to this cartoon, let's assume these are the gallstones within the gallbladder. Rarely, these gallstones may travel out of the gallbladder and enter the bile tube itself and in doing so they are transported down into the bile tube. It is when they reach near the pancreas that's when they can trigger an attack of pancreatitis. This can happen between 3 and 7% of patients with gallstones. The other common cause is alcohol and this accounts for about a quarter of the cases of pancreatitis and between these two gallstones and alcohol they account for two-thirds of the cases. Less common causes of pancreatitis includes post-ERCP. ERCP is an endoscopic procedure where an endoscope is inserted into the stomach, goes down into the small bowel, pops itself ne next to the bottom end of the bowel tube and typically tries to get rid of the gallstones by drawing them back into the small bowel. In doing so, this may also trigger pancreatitis. Pancreatic tumors which cause obstruction of the pancreatic duct are also a source of pancreatitis. Devel developmental anomalies of the pancreatic duct may sometimes predispose the patients to recurrent acute attacks of pancreatitis. Other causes include direct injury to the pancreas itself. Sometimes stones may not be found within the gallbladder, but there might be biliary sludge or crystals, and these act much like the stones in triggering an attack of acute pancreatitis. So these are the causes that directly affect the pancreas. The other causes have a more general effect in the body and may implicate pancreas indirectly. Certain types of medication may, may set off pancreatitis such as steroids, antidiuretics, etc. The list is long. High levels of lipids in the blood such as high triglyceridemia beyond a certain range may trigger pancreatitis. High levels of calcium, autoimmune pancreatitis where the body's own immune cells attack pancreas and triggers pancreatitis and certain infections, commonly viruses, may cause the same problem. Bacterial, fungal and parasitic infections are much less common. Finally, patients who have familial history of pancreatitis, i.e. they have more than one member affected with pancreatitis with no common cause may have a genetic component. Lastly and importantly, in a third of the patients, no obvious cause may be detected. So here are the list of investigations that are required to try and find a cause for pancreatitis when one when the cause is not obvious. Starting with the history first, history of gallstones, history of alcohol intake, medication, whether or not the patients have got high lipids or diabetes, causes that may cause high levels of calcium and so on. Now let's look at the scans. Ultrasound scan is the first scan to perform. This will pick up gallstones and in most cases, this is the only scan that is required. If an ultrasound scan does not show gallstones and a cause is not obvious, then an MRI scan of the abdomen may be performed. This will not only pick up hitherto unseen gallstones, but it may also show structural pancreas anomalies such as a tumor or abnormalities of the pancreatic duct, which may, predis which may predispose to recurrent acute pancreatitis. A, a CT scan will do the same, but an MRI scan in this situation is preferable. An endoscopic ultrasound is an examination of the pancreas with an endoscope with an ultrasound scanner attached to it. It goes down into the gullet, stomach, and, by, and within its travels, it assesses the pancreas as well as the gallbladder. This is one of the most important investigations in trying to get to a cause of pancreatitis because it will look at all of the pancreas, its parenchyma, the pancreatic duct, whether or not there's a tumor or any other cause that may predispose to a structural problem with the pancreas and whether there are crystals and sludge within the gallbladder 
or within the bile tube that may trigger pancreatitis. The sensitivity of an endoscopic ultrasound is superior to any other scan. Finally, blood tests are required, such as in assessing high levels of lipids, calcium, hormone levels, and whether or not there's an autoimmune component to pancreatitis. Autoimmune pancreatitis will also produce an appearance of the pancreas on the scans which is quite distinctive. Lastly, for patients with recurrent acute pancreatitis and in whom the above tests do not show a cause, will be candidates for assessing genetic links of recurrent acute pancreatitis. This completes a basic understanding of the tests required for diagnosing the cause. Lastly and importantly, some patients will be affected by the condition recurrent acute pancreatitis where they get attacks of acute pancreatitis at regular intervals. This is a terrible condition and it affects their quality of life. It also makes them prone to developing chronic pancreatitis, which is a lifelong condition. And in such a situation where patients have more than one attack of pancreatitis and no cause is found, there should be no hesitancy in requesting referral to specialist units, which have an interest in treating and managing acute pancreatitis and in doing so improving their chances of trying to find a cause for pancreatitis. This is the end of this video. For further information on this topic, please do look into the playlist. If you have any comments, please do share.